Hello wonderful person, welcome to Trappist 1. This red dwarf right here might potentially have life on one of the planets in its system, and today we're going to discuss this possibility using Universe Sandbox. Welcome to What the Math. So for several years now, we've actually been talking about the possibility of life evolving around red dwarfs. And when we found uh, Trappist-1 with its seven terrestrial planets, this possibility, possibility actually kind of increased. And then it suddenly dropped when we realized that a lot of red dwarfs are too active. They have too many flares and they basically strip their uh, planets that orbit around them of any potential atmosphere and water. Although, in some cases, maybe just maybe, there might be some water left, at least on the opposite side of the planet. Anyway, so we still don't really know if and how these planets look. Uh, we might be able to find out in 2018 when James Webb Telescope takes flight and is able to actually look at these planets. For now, we, we can only speculate and use a uh, theory of stellar formation to try to estimate what's going on here. But there's still quite a lot of um, actual theories that think that maybe just maybe a life could evolve on one of these planets and maybe even some, uh, maybe even more than one, potentially some in the habitable zone right here. And because these planets are so close together, life could even spread from one planet to another via various um, asteroids due to collisions. But let's not rush ahead. So, if there is life on, let's just say, TRAPPIST-1e, how could it potentially evolve? Well, today we actually think that life on Earth may have originated around these things. These are so-called hydrothermal vents, also known as black smokers, or possibly inside caves. Now, if life did start around these unusual formations that are usually underwater, um, could it have also started right here on TRAPPIST-1e, assuming there is water somewhere on the opposite side of the planet? Well, if we assume that life did evolve around hydrothermal vents and life can sustain itself there, then it's possible that resistant uh, organisms could actually colonize these habitats quite easily on other planets and uh, possibly even develop some sort of a protection against these flares with time and then evolve onto other parts of the planet. So there is a slight possibility that this is actually a reality not only on other planets but also in our own solar system on moons of Jupiter and Saturn, for example, because we have already discovered that they probably have these hydrothermal vents as well. We've also discovered various organisms living inside caves around the world, including some organisms that actually became blind over time. And so we know that life can totally evolve in caves as well, specifically really, really, really dark caves um, that might be protected from solar flares and harbor all kinds of creatures inside. But that's also a speculation, and I guess uh, we wouldn't even know if uh, life can actually live outside of those caves or if it would be contained only inside of these very unique environments. But obviously there are caves on pretty much all of these planets, mostly because that's kind of how uh, terrestrial worlds work. You kind of expect them to have caves. And if there are caves on, for example, TRAPPIST-1g, then maybe, just maybe, we can probably we can discover a creature that looks something like this, or possibly something completely different. So there's definitely a possibility that life could have evolved on caves in a TRAPPIST-1 system. Other creatures might actually survive by burying themselves inside mud or earth or something else. Like for example, this is a very unusual creature known as the Bobbit Worm. It can reach several meters long and it can be absolutely terrifying and can actually kill fish really, really fast. This is from Smithsonian Channel that posted this video of a Bobbit Worm that was uh, discovered by one of the divers. And uh, these types of creatures can definitely survive by burrowing inside uh, underwater and this could definitely protect them from solar flares as well. And then there are these creatures called tardigrades, uh, also known as water bears, that are known to survive hostile environments, including, of course, space. And these creatures can actually develop a very unusual shell uh, that prevents desiccation and prevents damage 
um, that will usually protect them for some time and then they can kind of get rid of the shell and continue their life when the environment becomes better for life, more suitable for life. So it's possible that some life on Trappist-1 and other um, around other red dwarfs has developed these types of uh, protection devices as well. And then there are creatures that might have shells to protect themselves from all kinds of dangers including solar flares and maybe just maybe these shells might be enough to protect them from solar flares if they actually have some sort of metal or even other materials that would protect them from radiation. And when you think about it, even uh, primates have a servo protection. Our hair is actually a type of uh, protection from the sun because it's essentially made out of dead cells and mammalian hair is very good at protecting us from all kinds of dangers so it's possible that uh, some creatures on other planets may have developed tremendously large hair to protect themselves from solar flares at least that's one of the ways we can protect ourselves as well and on top of that, on Earth, we have things like plants that can actually survive quite a lot. Even during forest fire, most trees actually survive because their roots are completely untouched. So the entire forest, even after it burns down, gets repopulated pretty quickly within only a few years. So on a planet in a Trappist system that might experience a lot of solar flares or might even experience uh, some sort of a fire, the creatures that have to deal with this type of problem might actually lose the uh, parts that are above ground but everything inside underneath uh, will survive just fine and will actually start a new cycle as soon as the flare is finished. So there is quite a lot of possibilities for the existence of life in a uh, Trappist system and also around other red dwarfs. And for all we know, maybe just maybe all of these situations are actually happening there right now. We won't really know for quite a while and we won't be able to even see if there is anything life related happening for at least another decade because we don't have enough equipment to do it. Although when it comes down to it, maybe just maybe some of these planets, at least one of them, one out of seven, has just the necessary conditions to have at least some sort of a extreme life that might live there. And if you actually play around with the numbers in Universe Sandbox, you might discover that you can actually create the conditions where the chance for life is over 60%, which is by itself quite impressive. So the chance for having some sort of life in Trappist-1 right now is pretty high. Whether it is there or not, maybe one day we'll discover, maybe not. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and I wanted to briefly mention a few reasons and a few situations when life might actually be able to evolve and survive around a red dwarf. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.